Well, hello everyone and welcome to this evening reflection from Gordon United Church in Langford, BC. It is Transfiguration Sunday and that means it is the last Sunday in Epiphany and we're moving towards the beginning of Lent with Ash Wednesday this Wednesday. I'm Reverend Heidi and I'm happy to be able to lead you in worship this evening. We begin as always with a few deep breaths. I'd encourage you to sit with your feet on the floor and your hands open and relaxed, or if you're lying down to just try to straighten your body so that you can breathe deeply. And just take, you know, three to five deep breaths to just go deep into your lungs. And that just helps us settle our bodies and our spirits. We gather today in the presence of Christ, and so we light a candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world and that no matter what's going on in our lives, this light burns bright. The candle might go out, but Jesus remains with us, the light of Christ. I want to acknowledge that where I am today uh, in my study at Gordon United Church is on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking people here on Vancouver Island. And we acknowledge that we're guests on this land, that we are truly privileged to be here in this beautiful place. And that as a Christian and as a person of European background, that I have an obligation to learn as much as I can to listen carefully and to walk steps towards reconciliation. I want to play for us some quiet music again this week. This is by Pat Wilson, our flute lady. It's called In the Palm of God's Hand. Let us pray. Holy God, we come today with many worries on our mind, fearful for the people of Ukraine, worried and saddened by the divisions in our own country and aware that division and conflict exist all over our world. We know you treasure every life on this planet and that war is not your will for your people. We pray that the leaders of our nations will intervene in order to save the lives of the innocent, including soldiers forced to fight in a war, whether they choose to or not. We pray for peace in our own hearts, for the ability to see the humanity in each person and to witness to a path of peacemaking and justice. As we face the events of the coming week, help us to be strong, 
to witness to truth and compassion, and to place our trust in you and in the best of humanity. I invite us to sing together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our scripture lesson for today is from Psalm 51, verses 6 to 12. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. So with this being uh, the last week before Lent begins, that means that Tuesday is Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday or Shrove Tuesday. Uh, it has many meanings, but it was the day that traditionally Roman Catholics would use up all of the so-called indulgent items in their house, their meat, as well as butter, fat, cream, sugar, uh, which is why pancakes, often with bacon, are traditional. Many Catholics still observe the tradition of not eating meat throughout the whole season of Lent. Now, Lent is not exactly the most popular season of the church year, as people, of course, associate it with self-denial, sobriety, penitence. But at its best, it can be a rich season of growing deeper in our relationship with God, with one another, and with the world, and of course, with our inner self. Any, pardon me, any giving up? or denial that we might choose has to do with being aware of how much we have and how much others do not, which is why almsgiving or charity is usually tied to the practice of giving something up. When I was a child, we were given cards, I think they were about this big, uh, for each of the days in Lent. And there was a little slot, a little pocket, uh, in which you would put a coin a nickel, a dime, a quarter for each of those days in Lent. And at the end of the season of Lent for Easter, pardon me, the money went to the Mission and Service Fund, which was a great way to help people learn about the giving part of Lent. In addition to the link with giving, each time we think of the thing that we are letting go, that we're missing, we bring to mind the reason for our decision to let that thing go, that it's 
a spiritual practice, a way of deepening our awareness and our knowledge of God. My own practice, if I'm giving something up, is to offer a small prayer every time it comes to mind. Now, others will choose to add something to their lives during the Lent season, such as beginning a new spiritual practice, a new kind of prayer, a Bible reading, um, a, a walk, a meditative walk, something like that. Lent was also a time for those wanting to be baptized as Christians to undergo a period of mentorship and instruction in the Christian faith. And then they would be baptized on Easter as a part of that great celebration that we have on Easter Sunday. Many congregations still offer special group studies or contemplative meditative services or confirmation classes during this period to help people grow in the knowledge and the depth of their faith. And pardon me, there's those yawns. As soon as the camera goes on, I start yawning. Go figure. This year for Lent, we're going to be combining this tradition of learning and deepening in our spirituality as well as the practice of taking up something new by focusing on creation spirituality, which is very familiar to some and not at all familiar to others. Creation spirituality begins with a foundational idea that rather than being tarnished by original sin, as has been traditionally taught, particularly in the Western church over the centuries, we begin with original blessing. We focus on the blessedness of creation, creation and of human life, rather than some idea that we're all cursed from the very beginning. As human beings, we are part of the blessedness of all that is, that God declared to be good according to our creation stories. So rather than the more traditional focus on sin and mortality in Lent, we're going to instead lift up the different aspects of a life that honors the blessedness of all that is. Creation spirituality has a lot to say about the world we're living in today. Instead of fearing diversity of thought and religion, we celebrate it as a sign of both divine and human creativity. We celebrate diversity itself as one of the essential traits of a healthy system. We call for justice as an authentic path of spiritual life, especially, but not exclusively, justice for non-human creation. We encourage an experiential, embodied spirituality that once again emphasizes that God is present in the here and now. So we're going to be incorporating, I hope, some drumming and some dancing because it's embodied. It's something that we do with our whole bodies, just like it is when we sing. It reminds us that there is holiness in our embodied selves. We also recognize that creativity is often born out of experiences of great beauty and of great pain. And creation spirituality doesn't flee from suffering, but it doesn't glorify it either. It gives suffering its proper place in human existence. So that's just a little taster of creation spirituality for now, but I invite us to enter into a prayer that comes out of this tradition. It's a breath prayer, so that practice that we've been getting and breathing in and breathing out is part of the prayer. So once again, I invite you to breathe deeply and peacefully as we enter into this prayer by Christine Spine. Breathe in the love of God. Breathe out and share it with the world. Breathe in the peace of God. Breathe out and share it with the world. Breathe in the life of God. Breathe out and share it with the world. Breathe in all that is of God. Breathe out and share it with the world. May these prayers be as much a part of us as the breath moving in and out of our bodies. Amen. 
I'm going to invite you to sing along now with a hymn called Called by Earth and Sky. And this recording comes to us from Ebenezer United Church. The previous Lord's Prayer recording came to us from Golden Ears United, and we're grateful to both churches for sharing the music with us today. And sorry about my phone, forgot to turn it off. Oh 
Friends, the worship is ended, but the service begins. Go forth to love and to serve all of life in the name of Christ, who was and is the man of peace, in the name of the spirit, the holy dove, the peace that travels throughout the world, inspiring human hearts, and the name of the creator, who has called all of life and all of humanity blessed. Go in peace, amen. I'm going to play one more piece for you as we end this service. It's by Tim Olford, God is so good and count your blessings. Good evening, everyone.